Well, welcome back, folks. Uh, we're just finishing up this compressor rebuild, and I messed up and didn't have my microphone turned on on this. So uh, all I was doing here, no big deal. I just wanted some big washers to go on the bottom where that compressor bolted on. Uh, you know how the thin washers, a lot of times they'll sink into the slot where the adjustment slots are. So I was just uh, building me some thick washers out of a piece of scrap I had here. And uh, really all there was to this. So that's just an explanation here of what I was doing. And it's not much here to see. Just... Uh, drilling a hole in this and then parting off four washers anyway we'll get on with the video here How's everybody doing out there in TV land? I had company yesterday and got kind of sidetracked, but I got to get this compressor back together. Because I need it to do a job over here. As you can see that pickup on the left, I need to bust the tires off and uh, check the brakes and do some stuff anyway. Um, I just machined those washers, oh yeah, by the way, sorry, uh, I had my microphone, which I forgot to put on the, this morning. Just for a little test, if you want, try not to waste too much time. I had this microphone on yesterday, but I don't know if you're seeing this very well, it's kind of dark in this corner. But, um, I forgot to turn this thing on. I don't know if you've ever used one of these. It's a Movo. I don't remember where I heard of one of these. I think some YouTuber used these. Had a while, but if you don't turn it on, dummy, it don't work. So, just for a test, if you want to see if it changes the sound of this any, I'm just kind of getting set up here to put this compressor together. I hadn't even pointed the camera down here yet. I'm over in the corner. I built those washers yesterday, and that's what I was going to tell you. I didn't, uh, I don't have a good way to clamp this. We'll just do it real goofy for right now. Uh, so, I'm probably going to voice over that audio on, if you notice the first part of this. But J.O. is probably going to be a voiceover when I was building washers on the lathe. I'm going to plug this in, and I see what this does here. Well, I said I am. Alright, testing. Can you hear me any better now? I do believe I have it turned on. And assuming the battery's good. For some reason that light only comes on when you first flip it on. So Anyway, let's look down here and I'll show you something real quick. Because I don't remember what you saw yesterday. And I've got this camera in a goofy mount that I probably have never used uh, on this but I just I made some thick washers yesterday on the lathe just because these slots in this they hold this compressor down they're kind of wide and you know thin washers will kind of flip up it had these little, little thin these small 3 8 bolts holding this down and I didn't care for it because you know, the holes are big enough for a 7 16 bolt, so I went ahead and put 7 16 bolts and those big thick washers I put on the bottom where that slot is, flat washer top, and then a, a, a lock nut on top. 
I didn't buy none of this stuff. This is some stuff we had left over from bumpers and stuff at work. Just some scrap bolts and they're brand new hardware, but you know, from truck accessories and stuff. So I kind of save that stuff up for sometimes use, using it. Anyway, I've already kind of cleaned this thing up. I set the, I stuck the uh, crankshaft in here. Remember on the last video, I went ahead and uh, I polished the crank because we had a bad rod. I don't remember how much of this we, I forgot what we did. It's been a few weeks ago. Here's the old rod. And I may have to refer back to that video actually to remember. I think that I said that the words on the rod were facing the flywheel side, I believe is what I said. Anyway, I'm getting ready to put this back. I, I don't, I didn't get to show any of this because I've been real busy on stuff, but here's the cylinders. I borrowed a big home. This is four and three quarter bore. I had to borrow a home. The cylinder looks fair, but I mean, there's no big gouges or scratches real bad. I just wanted to be sure and hone it. Because for some reason it has a look in here like it's probably because it sat a long time before I owned it. And I guess you just see the spot where the rings sat, you know, for a few years or something like that. I don't know. I don't like the looks of that, but I honed it pretty good. And this one we honed with a regular ball hone. And anyway, it's it's ready to go. I hadn't lubed nothing up yet. I think the best way to do this or the only way scott was going to build his compressor i don't know where he, how far along he is on his compressor yet his is a is a, a two bank job i think it's a v v twin or whatever you want to call it. this is just a single but this thing puts out uh, i forgot the specs on this dead burn i think 17 cfm's air this is a pretty good compressor it's five horsepower uh, you know, that's a huge hole. This is your low side and then your high side. So basically it takes all of that air and turns it into a small hole and compresses the heck out of it on the high side. That's enough learning. This is Mr. Pete's How It Works videos. But uh, anyway, that has a little bit of a taper right there to help you get the ring started. So the best way you can do this is get your pistons sitting in here in the crankshaft and torque them down. Get your gasket down and then we'll try to slide the uh, sleeve over all that and of course get it all lubed up with some kind of oil real good and hope we can get all this done. So, uh, you know, remember this has this, uh, I've talked too much instead of working, don't I? You know, this, I don't have any air to blow anything clean. This is pretty clean. We're gonna have to go with it. I don't have time to monkey around. I need this thing. So, just looking, yeah, the big hole goes here at the big piston. So I guess we'll turn this crank up. I don't wanna mess up with uh, which direction this cap was on there. I put it on just like it came off. Always need to do that if you take something apart talking to myself, you know, and uh, if you take something apart, make sure you stick it right back together, uh, just like it was. In fact, while I'm mouthing, I need some oil to lube that crank. Here's some right here, isn't it? Some Mobile One 520 ought to be good enough to lube this but I wish to I really don't like mixing uh, synthetic with uh, here's some uh, for a Kubota tractor I think I worked on oh that ain't been opened I hate to open that well I do a lot of monkeying around on a let's just lube it with anything and get it over with Put messing around I'm not filling it up with oil I just want to pour a little in here just so I can lube this stuff as I assemble it. You know, in the rod. 
just to make sure nothing's dry, you know, when you put it together. Heck, you know, when they throw these engines and stuff, you ever seen any, you know, long blocks or short blocks that you buy from a parts store or even from Ford or GM or whoever you work for? Uh, a lot of times you can tell that, you know, probably some girl or some kids that don't care put the engines together and they appear to just be put together pretty close to dry without much lubrication at all so and they generally work out fine it's just kind of something i like to do besides rambling on like i'm doing is lube everything up i have some assembly lube it probably wouldn't hurt to just use that but it really don't make any difference as long as it's got some kind of whoa lubrication on there once this thing runs, it's going to splash that oil all in there and it's going to be on everything. So it's not a extremely big deal as long as it's lubed up a little. That just seems like it don't want to go real great. But uh, you know what I just did? I don't know if I... I've got this gasket here that I need to put on. I just didn't know if it'd go around that piston or not. Yeah, it will. Well, that's all this is, is kind of a paper gasket. I mean, it's fairly kind of pliable thick. It feels pretty good. It's not like just dry paper, kind of a rubbery type paper gasket. I guess you might say it's not rubber, but you know what I mean. There's nothing wrong. I put all new gaskets on this when I rebuilt this a few years ago. So the ones that look good, I'm just reusing. And you don't want to put no silicone on that. Don't be crazy. I guess you could if you were careful, but you know, you could change the height of things a little bit. Probably wouldn't matter, but I don't have a tool here. That's what I'm rambling about. I need, here it is. There we go. Forgot what size these were. I think they're about a quarter inch. Three, four, five. I think they were about a quarter. Yep. All right, I can set this stuff down. I'm taking forever on this. We're gonna have to speed this up. There we go, now we can kind of get to this. You know, I don't know why that's, I think it had a little Loctite or something on that thread, but it's feeling all right now. You ought to, torque these down but I don't know what the torque spec is or even how to find that information so we're going to wing it on this one I have built enough engines and stuff I have a good idea as long as they're equal and they're torqued enough I think we'll be good so I know about how hard I'm pulling on this one you know I'm not saying do it the way I'm doing it I'm just telling you how I'm doing it right now this is my own equipment. I'll do it how I want to, right? <laughs> Not saying it's right, but I got to get it done right now. I ain't got time to go to town and get my torque wrench out of my toolbox at work and all that. I ain't got time for that. So, all right, that piston's on. The other one we got a new rod for, so it's going to take a little more monkeying around. I'm going to get this out of the way for now. Here's the new rod. I ordered a new set of rings too, so I think I told you before, you don't normally reuse rings. This has a needle bearing up in here where the wrist pin goes. So of course you'll want to get some oil in that. Cause that's up pretty high. It may take it a little while to splash oil up in that area. So anyway, you know, I don't know if I can, I'm gonna have to put that piston on, I think before I do this. So we'll get back to you in a minute when I get the piston on here. It's not, a, if it gets very exciting, I'll show a picture of that or something. See you in a minute. All right, I'm back for a minute. I just had to get a few tools. I closed that door over. It looked like the light was killing the picture. 
All I did is took my stamp ring pliers, put this stamp ring off, and it looks like this is going to come out. Find it pretty easy. Just push that pin out. Well, it felt like it was. Oh, I'm putting them the wrong way, you dummy. No wonder. See, there's a snap ring on both ends of that, so just take something, push that pin out. Remember which way this was on here. Here's the words on the rod. This one don't really have any identification, but there's a, notice there's an oil hole coming up through this side. So we'll put the oil hole here, not the same way, we'll put it on here just like that, just like it was. So, man, yeah, well, you can see this. There's nothing much here to see. Uh, I'm just going to take it off of that one. Just put a little bit of oil on the sides of this piston, or the, where it, on the rod where it rubs on the piston in here. Just make sure it's lubed up good. Okay. Get that rod in there. We'll stick this pin right back in there. Get it lined up. There it goes. Then, Scott, if you're watching, these are snap-on. They're like almost snap-on players. These are blue point. I have two sets of snap-on or blue point. I think I've actually got this is an extra little small one I bought blue point but I do have two full sets of snap on snap on pliers work good. Alright, that's all there is to that. Of course we're gonna have to put rings on this before we get done, but let's make sure all this is a now I need to think about that oil hole. Before I button this up, I may go watch that video and be sure which way. I'm pretty sure I said that the words were towards the fly wheel, and that's the way this is. That oil hole is pointing that way. It may not be right. I mean, need to look into that. It may not matter, but I bet it's because of the, wherever it splashes the oil up the most, it probably. And it may not matter at all because that oil is going to splash around like crazy in there, but it's just a place that oil drains down into that right there. So, anyhow, let's get this on there. I really doubt it matters, to be honest with you, but like I said, I like to put everything back together just like I took it apart. As long as I think somebody didn't have it apart and done it wrong. I may not can get this apart. <coughs> no, they had that together, Tack. My word. They didn't want that to fall apart in shipping, did they? This is taking too long, I know. Just, I may have cut this down. There's no sense in showing all this on video, but I started a series on building this pump, and so I felt like I needed to finish that series. It's not a real big deal to build one of these, you know. I don't know about anybody can do this. Okay. I'll leave the bolts hanging there. Hope I don't drop this. Lose track. There we go. All right, let's get this on here. I already looped it up. It's kind of hard to get down in there to that. Hope I don't drop it. I want to be sure it's on the right direction here. Can you see? No, you can't. Good night. Sorry about that. Here you go. Now you can see it. Woo. Yeah, I don't have any air tools or I might could have used them on this even, but I mean, I don't have any air to run anything until we get this fixed. So. I used to have a 
portable air compressor to use for backup situations like this, but I had it so long and didn't use it. I had it back here in the carport area so I could air up tires and stuff. And I never used it because I never I always used this one. So a friend of mine needed one, so I traded him something for it. And it was a pretty nice one. It wasn't a little cheapy. It was a cast iron pump on it like this, but it was like a three horse or something. Electric. Anyway, the dirt divers had got in and ruined the thing, so it was no good. Uh, he didn't, I don't know what he did with it. I wish he'd give it back. I would have fixed it. But he said the dirt divers had messed it up. He's not the type, he's a mechanic at work, an older man. But he's not into fixing stuff like this for some reason. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, you probably noticed I forgot to put that microphone back on me, which I don't like it when I'm going after tools because, you know, this is not a wireless. It keeps you pretty close by to the camera. So if you're not hearing me as well, it's because I took that microphone off a while ago when I went to get some tools. I'm just tightening both of them about the same. So that ought to be good. Now we got both pistons on. And of course we'll need to lube them up, they're clean. Just need to lube them up, put the new rings on. I'll have to look into that, which way the rings go. There's usually, most rings have a mark on top. Like that one I can see it's got a dot on the top of it. If they don't, then you should have some instructions in there. Tells. Sometimes they'll have a little groove or something on one side of them. You have to look. Figure that out before you put them on. So let me go uh, find the range, and uh, we'll get ready to do that here in just a minute. So bear with me. Well, here we are, folks. Back. I just went and took a break a little while. Now it's getting kind of hot in this shop. Of course, about noon now. Watch a few videos. You know how it gets when you go look at something on YouTube. Then all of a sudden you see other videos pop up that you want to see so then I make mistakes of, co of commenting sometimes on videos and then everybody wants to argue about everything so if I see some kind of video that I'm pretty familiar with I'm just taking these rings off right now so this guy was talking about <clears throat> remember my backgrounds in automotive repair for Basically, since I was 16 years old, was about when I got started in that type of work. And I've done it ever since, along with other things, but anyway. These do have marks on the top of these old rings, anyway. I still don't have the microphone on here because I gotta keep running around getting tools, so hopefully you can still hear me fairly well over here in this corner. Word. I'm trying not to scratch pistons or nothing. Okay, that's the lower ring. There's the top one. These are built a little different. This one kind of has a bevel around both. I'm putting them just in the order I remove them over here on this bench. In case I need to look at them again. Here's the oil rings. These are just like car engines, really. It's got the oil rings and two compression rings. Of course, I can't add about not wearing any glasses, so it's, you know, I can't see them little ring edges very good. It's kind of dark over here. Hope you can see. Anyway, back to that video. This guy put out a video I was just watching. It's, it was pretty good, actually, for a city slicker sounding guy, but... He was talking about how people think, Scott, if you get involved in this, you'll really 
you won't have the same opinion about this, but I'm telling you the opinions I have on this are based on facts from what I've seen over the years. So a lot of people haven't seen these things like me and others in the dealership. But the older trucks and cars were built pretty crappy compared to how the new ones are. And I, and I, I'm the same as you. I like working on the older ones more because they're a little bit simpler. You know, you don't have to have a computer. I'm talking about if I didn't work at the dealership, which I'm trying to get away from the dealership and find a different career path in the near near future, I hope. But, but it kind of scares me if I'm not working there that I can't even work on my own cars because of the electronics and some of the equipment that we need to use to test them and fix them and stuff. So that part I understand. It, and that I think is what people are talking about. That's what his video was talking about on this. I didn't even pay attention to the name of the channel that I watched this on, but if you want to know or watch the video, leave a comment and I'll try to, I'll find out what it was. It was pretty good. He was just saying the reason that people say that and he wasn't against the older cars or the new, the way he was describing it. I mean, he, he probably is. Doesn't lean more towards the newer ones. I, he didn't say that, but he was just saying the reason people say that stuff is the old ones would last longer than the new ones was because, mainly because, well, I got this thing so hung up, I can't get it on. That they don't know how to work on the newer ones. And they used to, you know, say they had an old 90 model Chevrolet or 80, you know, 80 something model Chevrolet. That's what he was describing is, you know, that they knew how to put their own alternator on or starter, or, you know, the things that would fail, they would just fix them themselves pretty easily and fairly inexpensive. But now a lot of the things you can't really do yourself or, or people don't attempt to do yourself at least in a lot of cases, in most cases. Anyway, that, I think that's, he was just saying that's where a lot of that mentality comes from is people, you know, they'll put their car in the shop for some repair and it aggravates them because they're already mad they got to spend money on their car or even if it's in warranty, you know, they have to take it to the shop and where they used to just fix them themselves. Uh, a lot of the things people could fix themselves if they would try, but most people don't even attempt it anymore for some reason. They're just, uh, I guess they assume that they can't do it. But a lot of things they could if they would just put a little effort into it. But anyway, that's what the video was about. But this one guy come back and say, I guarantee you my five liter 302, I think it's a 96 F-150. Will outlast any new car out there on the road or any new truck and everything else. And I had to step in and make a comment, which I shouldn't do, because it usually ends up in, in some cases, an all-out war or something. You know, everybody wants to argue about everything. I said, man, I've been at a dealership there since 1996. I don't think this oil ring makes any difference which direction. Uh, I said, I see the car. He said, this thing will, out, this thing will last I forget what he said, 200,000 miles or something like this, and these others won't do it. It's like, man, I see them all the time with two or 300,000 miles. These pretty new trucks. You know, in the last 10 years old or whatever. And uh, I said, the one, the older trucks like 96 model or whatever you're talking about, with those old 351s or 302s that were decent engines in their time, but they're not very good for today's quality. Both of these rings are the same. I just don't know which way it goes up or down. But anyway, the ones I see like a 302 or 351 style trucks, they're tired. They come in with 200,000 miles on them. The chassis is tired. The body's tired. The stuff's all cracking and falling apart. The, you know, the door panels are junk. The 
can't hardly open and close the doors. They need door latches and you know everything's just really tired on them. Whereas the newer ones I've seen with two, three hundred thousand miles on them come in, yeah, there's some dots on them. Right there. They they still drive like brand new. You know the ones built after say two thousand models or or thereabouts and newer. Them trucks still drive like brand new. The doors work fine. The, you just don't have troubles with the chassis or really engine problems or anything but on the ones that are well taken care of. And so that guy's crazy and he's probably some of the people that the guy's talking about that say these things. Uh, they're not based on facts. They're based on people who are more comfortable driving those older ones because they can work on them uh, themselves. And that's understandable. And if that's what you want to drive, then drive it. Uh, that, but, you know, it's not the fact. The fact is not that they'll last longer, that, uh, unless the fact is they're not going to get fixed unless you fix them. If you just park them and you're not going to go pay somebody to fix them, then that may be true. But uh, the things that go wrong are not engine, base engine problems anyway. They're usually, you know, some wiring or, uh, you know, uh, uh, some kind of a, maybe a sensor, actuator, just emission problem of some kind. Those are the things that fail on them, not, to, not pistons and rods and stuff like this, you know. That's, you don't see. It's real rare we ever have an engine out of a truck at the dealership. I mean, you could count on one hand the amount, the amount of them we do in one year's time, probably. So it's not real common unless somebody destroys them, of course, for some goofy reason. All right, I didn't get those. Uh, Oh, rings on there yet, do There we go. You just want to face these things away from each other, and I don't know. There's probably all kinds of opinions on this. Uh, whether you put the... Normally, you want to put these gaps just a little ways on each side of the of where this oil uh, ring down here is split. You just want to hold that together with this. So split that say if that gap is right here put one of these right here and one right here and it kind of holds that in place there the best I can remember that's how I'm pretty sure they always taught us to do it it'll work just fine if I can get this thing on here I should have brought my little screwdriver over here it would have helped grab that thing a little bit Word. Anyway, any comments about that thing with those trucks and stuff, I, I welcome uh, any discussion on that if you want. It. But I'm telling you, the fact of the matter is, the older ones, and I, I mean, you can come with me anytime you want. I just had a 67 Chevelle on the lift yesterday here in the shop, and I, it's just amazing to me how crappy the frames and how light duty the chassis and frames and drive shafts everything underneath the cars and trucks i know that's a car not a truck but back then they just really light duty the way they built them if you ever see one in a wreck the newer cars hold up not cars how about trucks they hold up big time in a wreck because the frames and everything are so much more solid and bigger and stronger. There was a poor guy that got killed in an accident downtown the other day in an 86 Chevrolet pickup against a Dodge, I think an 05 model Dodge three quarter ton pickup I believe. The guy in the Dodge didn't even get hurt. It was a head on collision basically down at about 40 miles an hour I think down close to Waterburger. Speed limit's 35, and so I don't know if the guy was speeding or not to hit him, but I think the Chevrolet may have been stopped, you know, in a turning lane or something. Anyway, it, it destroyed that 86 Chevrolet, and it didn't hurt the Dodge much at all, uh, and it wouldn't hurt a Ford F-250 either, you know, they're all, I'm just saying the newer ones are built a lot tougher than any of the older stuff. Anyway, my battery's going dead, and I'll get back with you in just a minute.
All right, folks, we're back. We got a fresh battery in the GoPro. We had a message come up on the uh, monitor here that said some kind of warning needing to get a new battery. So anyway, got a fresh cup of coffee, and I went ahead and stuck these rings on there. It's just pretty boring watching that. It takes forever messing around with that. So I guess the next step is let's go ahead and try to get some... Uh, Get these cylinders on it. I'd like to pour some oil down in here around these bearings. Just for the heck of it. I kind of lubed them a little bit when I had a car, but not much. I'm just going to pour some right down in there. And then I'm going to pour some down the sides of this piston. Make a mess a little bit here. But, anyway, I guess I shouldn't have named this video probably Rebuild the Compressor because you notice I get to rambling on about stuff. I, when I watch them videos, I start thinking about stuff that I, you know, it always seems like if you know something about the topic, obviously you know more than what the people are that are talking about it. It makes you want to chime in on the comments and if I probably ought to keep my mouth shut because nobody wants to agree with you. you ever notice if you know more than they do about it they're going to argue with you and you're going to be the idiot in the crowd so you know so uh, it's not really very useful to even say anything but I mean I, I usually try to say something just in a you know just to Hopefully educate somebody on what maybe my experience has been with something that hey, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I, I try not to really let my opinion override any kind of facts that I believe I have on something. But anyway, that's beside the point. We won't worry about that too much. Let's get this thing built. Anyway, I guess this video could be something like <laughs> shop talk about whatever and uh, and let's re try to rebuild this uh, compressor that's our main goal here so I'm going to rub some oil in these cylinders I don't figure you can see what I'm doing I'm not real exciting to see somebody rub oil just kind of rubbing oil in these cylinders here then, well, that little one's kind of hard to get your hands all the way in there. So. All right, they're lubed up. The problem is getting that thing on there is going to be a pain in the frame. And I've got to line up this gasket. Let me wipe that down. I don't know if I did yet. I think I did. I'm dropping rings all over the place, the old ones. I really don't think this oil's gonna hurt anything on this gasket anyway, but try to dry it up some. Well, anyway, I don't know how this is gonna go. I don't wanna break a ring or nothing, so let's just see how this goes. I'm hoping it'll go on there. But Kind of stuck. I guess I got to come back off there. Almost had it. I guess I'm going to have to get them both at once. Well, this is not fun, is it? like it's trying but my gosh it's hard to get two of them in there at once I could get one of them at a time they're pretty easy I think
You just gotta be careful. You don't want to break a ring. I think it's trying. I believe the little one's in. I probably should have a screwdriver here. Get this one started. This ain't real fun, is it? Let's see here. Let's just look down here and see what's going on. I may need two screwdrivers to you ever get them started in that paper. You know, I think one of them's going now, so let's see how this is gonna go. kind of needs two screwdrivers. Could use some help. Somebody grab that thing. Kind of give it a little pressure. I think it's starting now. Just try and be careful with it. Just make sure I don't damage something here. It's going to think. Try not to damage this gasket too. Could chop it off if we ain't careful. The piston skirt. A good grief. Now I can't get it around where it goes. It kind of shut me up on my storytelling there, didn't it? I bet you're glad of that. Alright, now I got this up here. Funny that they're kind of crooked somehow. Kind of got them out of whack here some way or another. Make sure this gasket's staying put. Somehow I got to cock this thing around somehow. There we go. I think I'm down over all the piston range, so as long as I don't screw this gasket up, I'll be good. It keeps trying to go down in there. Okay. Going. Just want to be sure the gasket stayed lined up with the holes there. All right, we're getting close now, but I think I'm a little tight on the gasket. Just want to be sure I can still move the gasket in place. Just move it up just a little. I think we're lined up. I can see the gasket and all the holes. Let's get some bolts in it. There's six bolts. So let's just get them in there. all the gasket holes will stay cut there while we're still kind of loose here that ought to help it wasn't too hard to stab actually I was surprised that I was able to do that by myself actually Okay. Of course, we'll want to tighten these center bolts first. I 
Looks like the gasket is probably fine. Let's need to be sure it's not pooched out or something. I want to get that tight. Just one bolt. Having a little trouble. Starting to get a wrench on here, I guess. I know you can't see this real well, but that's just how it is over here in this corner, I guess. I didn't have to bolt this down first, I just wanted to in case it, you know, keep me from having another hand to hold everything still. And it's working okay. I can get to this pretty well, I think. If I have to blow, pull it off, I think I can get to this to put the flywheel on back here just fine. But not, I'll just have to pull this compressor back on. I think I can. Look like there's about a, at least a foot of room behind that. All right, all the bolts are started good. Let's start pulling them down evenly. Well, that'd be good to torque these, but I don't think you could get a good shot on that anyway to torque it straight. So we'll just do some. All right, you ready to see if it's going to work? I just uh, put the belts on, filled it up with oil. Oh, I did put the cap on. Here we go. Put this little bit cap on. I still need to clean this oil up. 
That's how come I didn't notice leak noise. Oil been dripping around, but I got it wired back up, and I'm gonna go turn it on. So. Uh, I guess that's what we'll do. I'm gonna go down here and turn the breakers on and see if it comes off. gonna put the camera up but I'll just gonna show you it did pump up I didn't time it or nothing it took I don't know between five probably a little over five minutes and there it is it pumped up uh, I don't know 170 pounds of what I used to have set on I think it says 150 60 70 80 90 so 67, 175, 178 right in there. And it seems to vibrate a lot, but you know, I'm just a little scared of it now that it's had that trouble, I think. I think the flywheel on it, something about it, it doesn't run real true. I don't know why. Anyway, there's the model it was. I think we already talked about that. Speed Air 5Z404. And I got a lot of work to do today now, so uh, kind of bright in here, but I think I'm going to build me a little hoe to clean that out under there. And anyway, see y'all later.